For most people, nature is an enigma, a translucent vault in which only a handful have the code. To those who do know nature, those who truly embrace its mysterious ways, recognize its hidden wisdom, they know of its timeless behavior. But the truth is, one cannot truly know nature unless they see it from the perspective of the creatures that live there. One must bear witness to each animal's precise craftsmanship. But most importantly, to intimately know nature, one must be aware of its close proximity to us all, for only then can our hearts grow humble enough to access that code. We start in the chaparral ecosystems of Southern California. Raptors of the sky soar swiftly overhead, seemingly unaware and unfazed by the vast earth that runs beneath. Up high in the attic of a eucalyptus tree, a bachelor red-tailed hawk in his prime scouts his next meal. But even with the view, and even with eyesight, eight times more sensitive than a human's, success is only possible at close range, which means this hawk will need to make the jump. Traveling fast and far, a bird of his size wastes little energy flapping and instead propels itself by surfing over the strong wind current. Time to search. Searching, 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 searching. Bingo. He goes in hot. Unsuccessful and searching, searching, and searching. He calls it quits and flies off to fulfill a different hunger. A female, and of perfect age. Going to meet with him, the two circle in preparation of a timeless courtship ritual. What occurs next is a common behavior, but seldom seen by humans. They free fall, holding each other's talons until the force between them is too much, and they break apart. This has cemented their newfound relationship. They are a pair. And what do all pairs do? Well,
They'll do this sometimes over 20 times per day for over a month. In the next four to five weeks, the female will lay her eggs, indicating it's time for the male to begin his search for suitable nest-making branches. This one? No, definitely not bendy enough. Oh, I do like it. The nest perfect entry point for new breath to come into the world. That is, if it can be protected. Ravens are a nuisance. Like lions and hyenas, hawks and ravens are mortal enemies and destined to battle forever. At two-thirds the size of the hawk, an unkindness of ravens, as they're called, never fails to strike fear into a hawk parent. They're aggressive, taunting, persistent, and are always looking to claim another bird's territory as their own. One-on-one, -on -one, the hawk should have no trouble driving off a single raven, but there are many. He circles back, but is bombarded by the mob. Overwhelmed and outgunned, our father hawk chooses the high road and waits it out, screeching angrily in the distance in an attempt to intimidate. After nearly an hour of raven roulette, they become unnerved and decide to be a nuisance elsewhere. Not a glorious victory story, but any scenario where the future offspring are safe is a victory for the hawk nonetheless. As the sun sets over the valley, the orange glow sparks the activity of a very different bird. Closer to the ground, among the branches of the trees, stirs the acorn woodpecker. One of the more recognizable of the species, the acorn woodpecker sports the classic red and black feather pattern that makes them so iconic. Unlike many bird species, differentiating between sexes is simple. The female birds have red and white feathers that are separated by black feathers on their heads. On the males, the red and black feathers touch. This male picks around this tree for grubs. No luck. This female begins her search. This woodpecker's food of choice, grubs, the occasional palm date, and, of course, acorns. They are family-oriented birds, preferring to live in small groups all of their lives, often storing their food in the same tree for generations. But food acquisition isn't the only benefit to being in a tightly knit family. No, no. A large family means more eyes to keep watch for danger. The alarm has been sound. A predator. 
predator. The largest owl in North America. An owl of this size wouldn't dare waste energy on birds of such small size. But then again, it is just right there. The complexion of a horned owl is a haunting sight for both animal and human alike. It's one full of judgment and earnestness that proves too strong for some. One stare, and it becomes clear that it knows something that you don't. I see you. With talons longer and more powerful than the red-tailed hawk, it is capable of taking down prey much larger than itself. This includes animals like jackrabbits, skunks, and even the unlucky household cat or dog. Before setting out on its next neighborhood dog hunt, this owl must prepare itself for a long-distance flight. This involves giving itself a thorough cleaning, a fluffing up of the feathers, and coughing up last night's meal in the form of a wet pellet consisting of fur, teeth, and bone. In the day, owls are rarely seen. Their highly sensitive eyes are too vital to risk direct sunlight exposure. This pair roosts in a palm tree, a common nesting choice for many owls. Unlike other birds of prey, owls don't build their own nests. Instead, they prefer to steal one from other large birds like ravens, hawks, herons, or eagles. Once the sun begins to set, they inconspicuously take flight, using their highly specialized velvety wingtips to fly in complete silence. bit of a stretch before off to the next branch. Some much needed relief. It is mating season, the time of year when typical deep hoots echo through the valley, sending shivers up the spines of many. But underneath their inherent stoicism, the true nature of the great horned owl is revealed. This species of owl mates for life and upholds one of the strongest relationships in the animal kingdom. Perhaps owls have wisdom to share with us humans after all. piercing surprise.
brush of chaparral habitats, an alien world full of city slickers, hitchhikers, and eavesdroppers comes to life. The creatures of the night in the chaparral brush are special, for they possess special abilities that allow them to survive even in the pitch black. Barbed hairs, toxic pheromones, hard shells, night vision. No place for the squish. Finally, daylight comes, but not for long. This house finch knows what's coming and is prepared to fully embrace it. Winter rains create a brief reprieve in Southern California's eternal summer. Without it, an already harsh life would become even more brutal. These band-tailed pigeons don't seem to mind. Who wouldn't want to sit out in the rain? Well, maybe they mind a little. But, in the end, it will all be worth it as something good almost always comes from something bad. And that good is new life. Plants take advantage of this surplus to grow, flower, and spread seeds. Animals use it as an opportunity to rebuild. To find a partner. Eat a tasty meal in peace. Once barren landscapes blossom into lush green fields dotted by perennials that have survived the dry season. In the depths of the chaparral, by the river's edge, the effects of the rain are immediate. Crucial underground reserves are filled, quenching the thirsty roots of large trees and shrubbery. A green forest in which all life will benefit. It takes only days after a good rain before wildflowers begin to bloom, their vibrant colors bringing life to a dull landscape. But the rain can only give wildflowers an opportunity to grow. Something else allows them to reproduce. Sprinting to Mother Nature's aid, an agile, pea-sized missile with a bad attitude.
As gorgeous as the flowers they profit from, hummingbirds come in a vast array of colors. A necessary part of any healthy flower-based ecosystem, the hummingbird is one of the most efficient pollinators in the animal kingdom, visiting upwards of 1,000 flowers in a single day. Their wings beat at an average rate of 50 beats per second, enough to eradicate the need for ground travel. These birds might seem fragile, but this couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, these birds are highly territorial and will not hesitate to risk grave injury if it means warding off an intruder. Time for a battle of micro proportions. Fight. A wisp in the wind, and they're gone. As the sun sets on the valley, a dusky ritual takes place. Fights like this can leave a coyote mortally wounded. Lucky for this one, he seems to have gotten off relatively unscathed. Just a faint limp. His mate comforts him with a warm greeting, a tribute to the strong bond wild canines can share. He scrapes the ground, a sign to all other coyotes that this is his turf. But this attempt will not go unchallenged, as fights in the light hours of the day shrivel up in comparison to the competition that comes with a full moon. the moon. Its turquoise glow caresses our atmosphere with a soothing touch, providing a path for all of God's creatures. Back on the ground, Due to the surplus of rain showers and hours of intense sunlight, grasslands begin to overtake a once barren, dry landscape. Still, many of these grasses are invasive and lack the full nutritional value necessary to attract many native grazing species. But what grazes these hills 
is not native, and definitely not picky. Asses, also commonly known as burrows, have roamed the hills of Southern California for hundreds of years after escaping human captivity and breeding in the wild. It turns out that they are among the most hardy herbivores in the animal kingdom, rarely succumbing to diseases or falling victim to predation. The latter is largely due to their aggressive disposition and ear-ringing honking. Sun, however, is a predator no creature can escape, and burrows are no exception, as they cannot outrun the scorching heat. To combat this, a burrow will bathe in the dust, acting as a natural skin cleanser, sunblock, and insulator. Behaviors such as these are passed down from many observant generations, ensuring this intuitive species' survival. A foal born only 24 hours ago. Foals are up and running within minutes of birth. They need to be prepared for any conflict thrown their way, including attacks from predators. This one wants to have a little fun. Mom follows close behind. After a long and entertaining first day of life, this burrow escorts her little one off to a resting place where she can provide a meal. This foal will drink its mother's milk for the next two to four weeks before transitioning to a steady diet of plants, bark, and trash.
A well-earned rest. A very attentive mother of the year. As timeless as the sea itself, pelicans have soared over the beaches of the world with their eight-foot wingspan for thousands of years. Stoic, long-faced, and full of charisma, pelicans make an immediate impression on everyone they meet. They make sure of it. They are social birds, often congregating on large rockscapes to engage in sophisticated conversation. A high rock cliff is also a good place to warm up their bellies, which helps them digest their previous meal. They do this in groups too, and make it a habit to get in each other's way. But digesting can take hours, and while waiting, they are sure to stay productive by giving themselves a thorough cleaning. 
This rids any debris or parasites from their strong but vital feathers in which they depend upon. But pelicans are not known for their skills in chewing. They are known for... They are among the heaviest of all flying birds, with a mature pelican weighing an upwards of 12 pounds, three times the weight of a red-tailed hawk. Once food is spotted, they dive at an incredible 40 miles per hour, an impact that, if performed by a human, would be strong enough to break bone. So how do they do it? Off to hunt. Their necks are built with incredible architecture, with powerful muscles tensing up only milliseconds before impact, protecting the fragile spinal cord. They throw their wings back at the last possible second, allowing their very particularly shaped beak to take the brunt of the impact. When large prey is scarce, they will go for numerous small fry, which can be more challenging to catch, but satisfying nonetheless. That is, until something more enticing comes into view. A bait ball. Thousands of pelicans, seagulls, cormorants, and more come together for one of the largest communal feasts ever to occur in nature. Their food? Thousands of schooling bait fish pushed up against the ocean's surface by unseen predators below. The dolphins have arrived triumphantly making their presence known. A feast of this magnitude can last hours or even days depending on the region. Thousands of deaths, keeping thousands alive. A harsh world, but the undeniable truth nonetheless. But what about under the sea? Well, under the crashing waves, deep in the heart of the kelp forests of the California coast, night brings out a rather odd group of creatures the horned shark. They may appear meek and defenseless, with blunt teeth and only a meter in length, but they have a secret. Protruding from their backs are venomous spines used to puncture the mouths of any predator large enough to try and make a meal out of them. A score for the shark in this unforgiving sea. Back above the surface, on a hazy beach, one of the ocean's most delicate and charismatic creatures scurries over the sand. A supermodel. A couple of old friends. A cheering crowd. The Western Willet. These well-known shorebirds pace the beach in search of companionship and a meal. 
but it's winter, and their preferred diet of small fish, clam innards, and spiders has escaped them. In order to get proper nutrition, these birds use their specialized beaks to plunge into the sand softened by the ocean's touch. If they're lucky, they catch mole crab, a perfectly fitting meal for such a slender beak. The sun begins to set on the beachside once again, and as the tide rises, the most magnificent filter blankets the sand. A glass beach. It makes even the most mundane of creatures appear utterly majestic in their silhouetted form. ballerinas in a timeless dance between the sand and the sea. In the wee hours of morning, a very different group of animals begins to stir. Ones drawn close to extinction due to an overwhelming lust for their fur pelts. Sea otters have only been able to get by through their unparalleled agility, aggressive temperament, and their ability to blend into their natural environment. Finally waking up, are we? So these aren't their real abilities, but what they lack in ferocity, they more than make up for in bulk. There's a reason their fur was so desirable to humans. A human has an average of 100,000 hairs on their head. An otter has this in a mere square inch. An inner layer that insulates warmth and an outer layer that repels water. And they need it. The waters of coastal California can drop below 50 degrees. This one takes a morning swim. Finally, the sun is out, and a mother otter's job to entertain her young grudgingly begins. Cleaning, feeding, playing with, and finally restraining. Although all newborns are completely buoyant, they still run the risk of floating off to sea. She wraps her pup in kelp to prevent this. The group takes off, a regatta in search of food and a new resting place. In rougher waters, she finally finds a suitable meal before going back under.
of the oceanic environments, tide pools are among the most diverse, offering one of the most richly populated environments in the animal kingdom. In some cases, hundreds of marine species live within only a couple of square meters of each other. The red-clawed crab is one of these creatures. They pick at the rocks day and night, scavenging for pieces of algae and dead fish, not bothering themselves to even acknowledge the rough tide washing over them as they feast. They manage this only by the grace of their incredibly strong exoskeleton and exceptional grip. They are truly brutes in their own right, but even they have to be wary. A great blue heron, a common predator to these crabs, sits motionless as to not draw attention to itself. Where are they? Don't move. A standoff like this can last nearly an hour, but when life is on the line, the crab can wait. When faced with a smaller threat, however, a crab must be careful as they often attack the wrong things. And while the crabs undoubtedly have their fair share of fights in them, nothing can compare to the ferocity that lies just inside the land of the behemoth. The largest carnivore to roam land and sea simultaneously, a male elephant seal can weigh upwards of 5,000 pounds, nearly tripling the weight of a polar bear. The males have arrived from Antarctica, and although sociable by nature, each male prefers to go it alone while at sea traveling hundreds of miles in solitude instinct directing its course to a select few beaches on the coasts of California, Mexico, and the Gulf of Alaska. It is early February, and the territorial season is coming to a close, with each section of beach being governed by a single bull male. To gain such a title, an inquiring male can face dozens of challengers, each wishing to steal the title as their own. These battles can last hours, and with two-inch razor-sharp teeth as their weapon of choice, wounds are inevitable. And with the stakes so high, the price can prove too high for some. For the ones that do persevere, a prize awaits not only endless land and sea, but also a pleasure of a different value. A harem of females, seeking both protection and courtship, willingly live under the rule of a victorious male. Their penile structure is one of the longest in the animal kingdom, second only to the walrus, seven feet. Once territories have fully settled, a unique psychology begins to show its colors. Just one bellow from a dominant seal is enough to strike fear in the hearts of all those who oppose and send even the largest seals packing for the hills.
he tramples through, a long-time carrier of the Beachmaster title, doomed to all who dare mate with his queens. Back to good times. That is until one particular seal, a former loser, feels lucky, but the Beachmaster hasn't noticed yet. bit closer, perhaps. He doesn't see me yet. I've done it. And just as he's about to get away with it, spotted. Like a tank on steroids, he charges. deeper into the ocean, the opponent eventually tires and flees with the prize of his life. Success. He takes a victory lap. But it never ends. Another challenger. But this Beachmaster has learned. The early seal gets his harem. A final clash. <laughs> 